welcome to my home studio. And as promised from my last video, um, I said that I would be taking my next workout and breaking it into the intervals and teaching each interval separately with more cueing. So I am Lisa from LA Winters Fitness. If you're somehow just joining me for the first time, you'll find a lot of yoga and some strength training videos on my channel. And you'll also find a lot of breakdown instructed videos for the basic uh, poses in yoga um, and some other strength training exercises. But this workout is my signature uh, yoga and strength interval workout. So the first one to go up on the site will happen in a couple of weeks from now because in the meantime, I'm going to take the yoga sections as well as the strength training sections and uh, break them down for you so that if you are newer to weight training and or yoga, you can take the time to use these videos. Uh, they have a little more instruction, uh, a little more information for you to absorb and take in so that you can safely and effectively work out and smoothly work out with the video. Nothing will be new to you. So uh, I think it's so important that we understand what we're doing, why we're doing it, and uh, what good alignment is. Anytime I talk about alignment, I'm talking about the alignment in our body, of our joints especially, the spine, the shoulders, uh, the knees, the hips, um, the, the, the uh, hips and hamstring muscles and tendons, as well as the shoulder tendons, tend to have some delicate areas in there. Of course, the knees do as well. So we want to honor them and protect them so that we can strengthen also the tendons around those joints, which yoga does beautifully. Um, and, and that will help us in our day-to-day -day functioning. Uh, we'll be more mobile. We'll be more uh, less likely to injure more of those areas. So I could go on forever, but I won't, I promise. So I just did a little warm up. Whenever you're going into strength training, um, you want you want to have your uh, joints a little bit warm, your heart rate maybe a little lifted. So what I like to do is uh, three to five sun salutations. I think that's perfect because it really does start warming up and lengthening those muscles for the elasticity and lubricating the joints um, and raising the heart rate. Warms the body, prepares it for workout. But if you don't feel like doing that, then just walk around the house for four, three to five minutes or up and down the stairs, whatever works for you. But it's better to come into strength training not completely cold. So in the workout, we'll have a yoga interval before this one. So this is our first strength training or weight interval and there are three exercises. This workout is designed to hit all nine of their major muscle groups and work them out effectively for a little bit of strength building, toning, all of that. So this is the, the, the first section and it has three different exercises in it. I'm going to break down each exercise. We'll do one set of each and then come back around and do either the other side or do it slightly differently. So that way we can hit it. So what you'll need for this workout, the strength portions, is maybe um, a weighted medicine ball. You don't have to have one. So like I have, this is just, if I want to use this for form, it's light. It doesn't really have a lot of weight to it, but it's going to help me with my form, and I'm still, it's still going to be effective. And then what's surprising is the heavier one, the 12-pound, is smaller. And I tell you right now I'm using the 10-pound. So I'm also talking about when to go up in weight and not. So then I also have these wonderful dial of weights. And I'm going to need a 10 pound for my tricep extension. It's a smaller muscle. And I'm going to need a 12 and a half for my bicep muscle. Larger muscle. And that's another compound exercise. But you can use the neoprene. They come in different weights. Whatever, whatever you got. Just use it. All right, so as long as you're using it safely, it's fine. We'll talk about weight loads and finding weight loads and all of that. So this first exercise is, I'm just checking my workout that I wrote over here on my computer. Um, lunge with an overhead press. So this is one of those compound exercises, which means we're hitting a lot of muscle groups, which is great. And we're moving through it. 
um, in this one in particular with a lunge and an overhead press. So let me break it down for you because there is a lot going on. And I'm going to use my 10 pound medicine ball. We're going to start in a, in a still, a lot like yoga, very important in weight training as well. Um, still but active alignment, meaning I've engaged my muscles. So I'm not just soft here. I'm pulling my belly button in. I've lifted my shoulders, I've slid, slid my scapula down my back as if I'm tethering them to my hip bones so that my upper body is nice and open and strong and my spine is stacked. So I've set my tailbone down a little bit. I'm reaching up through the crown of my head and I've got my, I'm not locking out my knees, but I do have my quadriceps engaged and I can feel that my feet are grounded. Oh, by the way, I know I'm weight training there for yoga girl so I tend to do that but um, you may want to put your shoes on at least during the working out of these strength training sessions just in case you were to drop a weight or anything but I like feeling my foot in the floor so I can use all of my toes and the ball of my foot and all of that but up to you just do what's safe for you all right so we're going to start this exercise and a lot of parts to it this first one and we're going to take our medicine ball and we're going to draw the elbows in. We're going to create a strong and stable sort of architecture, I like to say, a structure that is well supported and able, you're able to maintain it for safety and good alignment. So I've got the ball and I've kind of pulled it into my mid chest. My shoulder blades are backing down. My elbows are really tucked in. I'm going to step forward. If you're mirroring me, my left, your right. So I'm going to reach forward as far forward as I can so that my heel on my back foot is towards the ceiling. So it's not angled at a side. Either way, it's straight up and down and the weight is on the ball of the foot and all five toes. So now, let's just do the first part because there's a combo here, but let's just work on alignment for the first part. We dip the back knee until the front knee is parallel. You may not be there right now, but eventually. You may need to scoot that foot forward so that when you dip the back knee and it's parallel, it's not passing, this front knee is not passing over the toes. You should be able to st still see them. So it can feel really unstable. So that's one of the things we're doing is we're, we're trying to memorize the muscle fiber recruitment, what we have to do in order to stabilize. So like I'm pulling my hips together and I'm pointing the back knee straight down, down instead of out. So I'm getting that good alignment. So feel that, find your balance, start to dip the back knee, just as far down as you can. And then come on up first. Now, I'll, uh, the second part we'll go over in a second with what the overhead press, but what I want you to understand is what's going on in the lower body first to come out of this. So to come out of this, we want to put the weight in the heel, lift the toes, and press out and back. And so see how I had to, I had to kind of stutter back? That's fine. You'll see as we flow with it, it'll get easier and easier as you get your strength and your balance to just kind of flow back. So again, let's do this, and I like to think of it in sections so that I stop, check my form. It's not just one fluid movement. It's going to be better if it's more robotic. So, step forward. Now, when the knee dips straight down, the ball presses. It's an overhead press. So we press it up. We keep it in our peripheral vision so it's not directly over our head, but it is in the eye line straight up. We press it up as the knee dips. Bring everything back together. Straighten the back leg. Pull it to the chest. Tuck the elbows in and press out the front heel. There you go. So let's do that a few times to get this exercise going. All right, so uh, in the workout, I think there's like 10 reps. So let's, let's do some reps. Take your time, stop and start the video if you need to, to get the feel. So I'm gonna step forward. Now we dip the knee, press the hands. So think of the knee and the hands going away from each other, coming back together, stop, press out of it. Let's do it again. 
Nice long lunge. Hit the lunge first. Dip and press at the same time. Knee and hands go away from each other. Come back together. Press down to the heel. Pull the belly button in. That'll help too. That's two. Here we go. Number three. Press. Pull together. And back. Float back as best you can. Pull that belly button in. Reset every time. Stepping out. Dipping. Coming together. I think we'll call that number five because we did some at the beginning. <laughs> Let's do five more. Stepping out. Dip and press. Pull the belly button in. Everything comes back together. Lock that ball. Float back. A couple more times. There we go. Keep breathing. Keep that air flow. Pull that belly button in. Learn to breathe with the abdominal wall engaged. It's not a belly breath. It's a diaphragmatic breath. Let's do two more. I lose count all the time. When I film this, I'm going to have to have help. Who's counting for me? All right. Last one. Best one. Concentrate. Good form equals proper strength and function in the body. All right. Good. Woo. That'll get the heart rate lifted, and that'll get you going. All right. We'll come back around on the second set of the three exercises and catch the other side. Next, I put the ball down. But that's so I guess so to catch my breath. All right, let's do elevator squats. Again, you don't have to have weighted anything in your hands. And if you don't have a medicine ball, you can use a plate or, or a dumbbell with, with all of these. Just again, don't ever put it like over the hip. Keep it in the dropping distance. <laughs> I'm trying not to drop it. All right, so these squats. First, let's just go over a good squat. You really want your hips, your feet, just outside the hips, not directly under, just outside. And I don't mind if there's just a slight, slight angle, but we don't want it to be too much. It's not a plea. What we want to happen a lot of people anticipate a squat. I see this all the time. And they start hinging forward. There really is no hinge forward. It's kind of an illusion. It happens naturally with where the hips sit back. So we want to actually keep from anticipating and doing that because it kind of ruins the structure of the squat and the form. So let's just start with our hands on our hips or right here is, is, is a good place. Keep the chest lifted. Again, keep the shoulder blades back and down instead of anticipating rounding forward. We want to keep that strong upper body structure because believe it or not, we're actually building posture up here when we keep that engagement while we're doing other things, yoga, squats, whatever. All right, so pull that belly button in. Now, without totally releasing the hips, just sit the hips back. Sit them back, sit them back, sit them back. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, maybe reach out for counterbalance. And then notice that you're not tracking the knees forward like that. That's not good for the knees. Keep them so they're still in front of the toes. So look down, check it out, and they're not flailing out. You're keeping the same distance between the knees, and you're sitting back and you're reaching back for those hip bones. Okay? That's what you want in a squat. Find your bottom. It's going to get lower as you go. You don't want to go below a 90. There's no benefit in that. You see some people doing those really deep squats. You don't want that. Keep the weight in the heels. You do not want the heels to come up even. You've got to keep the weight in the heels. Everything's reaching back to you. feel like you're going to fall back. All right. Squats really do take a lot of concentration. So we're going to amplify the work by stopping on our way down. It's an elevator squat. So it's weighted and we're stopping, which takes control and more work because you're not using momentum. So again, ball at the chest, tuck the elbows in, roll the shoulders back, pull that belly button in, shift the weight into the back of the heels, really feel that, shift it back. You might even be able to lift your toes. All right, pull the belly button in. We're gonna go down just a little ways. We're gonna go down four. 
And then we're going to go down another floor. We're going to stop. And then we're going to go all the way down to the basement. And then we're going to press through the heels all the way up. That's one. So we got first floor, second floor. Oh, that's kind of opposite, isn't it? All right. Third. We're going to cheat it that way because going up will make sense. But anyway, one, two, three. Press all the way up. Here we go. And stop. 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 Press up. That's two, three. And. And. Bottom press up. Here we go. Down. This is four. Down. Down. Press up. Pull that belly button in. Notice what it feels like as you stop. 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 Reach back. Press up. When you press up, you're really going to feel those quads as you press out of the heels. Come all the way up. You don't have to lock the knees. Please don't. Come up. Keep the quads activated without pressing all the way back so you lock them. You want to keep the muscles working and that way you're not hanging out in the joints. The joints aren't taking the work. You're strengthening the muscles around the joint to take the work. Here we go. We've got three, four. Let's do six more. Here we go. And one. Two, three, press up. Two, two, three, press up. Go on to six. Three, pull the belly button. Two, three, press up. Four, two, three, press up. Tuck those elbows in, pull the belly button, and keep breathing. Five, two, three, press. Up, last one, best one. Six, two, three, press up. There you go. Again, that'll get, that'll get things going. All right, so now we're gonna use those handheld weights. You'll need one slightly heavier than the other. So here's where we're talking about fighting weight loads. I want you to use this um, kind of learning the workout video to help you set your weight loads. Weight loads are how much weight you're lifting on any given exercise. So start light, start light or with nothing to get the form and then add the weight. And the idea is after you get going and you've done two sets regularly with whatever weight you're using, you'll know if you need to go up or down. Signs that you need to drop down in weight, you've got too much weight, is when you start losing form. So for instance, on this extension, when I'm extending the tricep, if my elbow stops, starts dropping, because I can't lift it any higher. Um, so it's been a while since I've done these. We're gonna see, I may have to go down in weight. Darn it. <laughs> on those. But when you start losing form, you drop down in weight. But you'll be surprised if you do it correctly and you have the right amount of weight on there so that you're also fatiguing the muscle. So by the end of the two sets, it's pretty hard to do it. We're not working to failure because we've got a lot of exercises in this workout and we'll probably get there by the end of it, but we don't want to start off there. So, um, but you're working to some fatigue so that it gets harder. If it's easy throughout, that's the time to go up in weight. So that's, that's what you're looking out for. Uh, never sacrifice form for weight. Promise you, it will bite you. Uh, injury can happen when you don't even realize it. Shoulders and hamstrings, I know, have taken a long time for me to heal. I just tweaked my shoulder. I'm telling you, it took like 13 months to get the range of motion and the strength back in it and to feel safe. All right, enough about that. So, next exercise. Since we went forward on the left knee, I guess we'll come down your right knee on, uh, onto the right knee. So we've got a nice structure again, our base. Now, the, um, the, the bicep hand is the one where the knee is forward. So you want a heavier weight there. Because the bicep is a bigger muscle, you lift a little more weight. Tricep, smaller muscle, we're isolating it, it's a little less weight. So I've got 12 and a half and 10. So whatever knee is forward, that's gonna be your bicep. So you can put your weight, your bicep curl, right inside the leg there. Again, it's really important placement that the ankle is always directly under the knee, not forward or back of it. So you've got a nice 90 degree angle. So keep your, your 
feet or your toes active, that you've got shoes on, doesn't matter, still thing, same thing, reaching towards the mat, stabilizing and activating that other leg, um, even while it's kind of not doing anything. It keeps your structure and your platform, like you're growing roots down into, anchored into the floor. All right, so now it's really important that we keep the upper body alignment. I'm, I'm just gonna harp on this, whether it's yoga or strength training. We have such a tendency because of being at our, on our devices, in front of computers, TV, whatever, and just gravity of rounding the neck, the shoulders, and the upper spine. So we really want to keep working everything correctly. And so we want to keep those shoulder blades back and down. So the scapula, the shoulder blades are working towards each other and they're reaching down. Gives that nice, beautiful, what I call like a ballet upper body. You want to keep that. All right, and strengthen it. But it's also going to prevent injury. So now, instead of rounding down towards the floor, we're just going to hinge. The only place that's bending right now, none of those little um, hinges on the spine, just right here at the hip. So we're going to hinge forward. We're going to take the weight for bicep curl. We're going to let it hang. And then we're going to just kind of attach the uh, upper arm into the inner thigh. That's going to be our brace for, for form so that we can curl all the way up and all the way down. So just try that with your singular weight. All the way up, all the way down. We're going to control it on the positive, on the up, and the negative. We'll get a workout in both ways without letting it drop or against gravity. Our tricep extension. So we're going to bend that elbow into a 90 and we're going to tuck it back. We're going to wrap that scapula across the back, tuck it in. And then we're going to fully extend, and you'll feel it, and come back. All right, we're going to do that at the same time. So it's kind of like rubbing your head and patting your belly, but you'll get it. All right, here we go. We're going to do a curl, bicep curl, and an extension at the same time. So on the exhale, I like to do the work on the exhale, but just keep breathing. Exhaling, bicep, extend, curl, and extension. Tricep extension. Here we go again, two. A lot going on. Pay attention. Three. This 10 pound on my tricep is, I'm feeling it. I'm actually going to drop down because this is the shoulder that I have been taking care of. We're almost 100%, but I don't want to risk it. So I am going to take my dial, dial weights. Actually, I'm just going to grab this 8 pound that I have handy. That'll work. So that's what I'm talking about. Even in the middle of a workout, please don't let your ego take over. If you need to drop down in weight, if you just need to take a couple breaths because you're losing form and you're just losing your oomph, do it. Go to child's pose, take some breath. Whether it's strength training or it is yoga, if you take a little recovery, even mini recoveries, mini savasanas when you need it, you're going to get more out of your workout and you're just going to feel feel better and it's going to motivate you more. So there you go. There's my little soapbox. Let's come back to these bicep curls with tricep extensions. Compound exercise. Getting our bang for our butt. Pull the belly button in. Make sure the chest is nice and lifted. And take your eye line just to head of the mat a couple mat or your foot a couple feet meters. That's going to keep your neck from rounding down. Here we go. Take an inhale. Exhale and work. Keep it going. Flowing. Tuck that elbow in the back. Keep it lifted. Three more. Three. Two. Best one, last one. Set that backwards. There you go.
forward lunge with an overhead press. Think about what that means. We're, we're integrating our mind, our body, and our spirit. So we're trying to keep everything working together. So we get the most out of this. And so we don't want to go on auto, autopilot. We always want to be in tune. What do I need to, what do I need to engage? What do I need to lift up? Where, where am I feeling weak? What do I need to adjust? Everything so we get stronger safely and, uh, and uh, working the brain, the body, everything together. All right, so remember, nice, strong, in yoga we call it kind of a standing mountain. It's active but still. Belly button is pulled in, tailbone is reaching towards the floor. Quadriceps are engaged without locking out those joints. Shoulders are up, back, sliding down, close to each other. Elbows are tucked in, nice and stable. Here we go. So now we're going to be reaching out on the left foot, my right. Big, long lunge. Check. Is the heel straight up to the ceiling? Have a nice long lunge. Is the knee over the ankle? Dip the back knee as we press the ball overhead. It stays in eye line above our head instead of back here. Pull the belly button in. Dip 90. Front leg is 90. Back knee doesn't touch the floor, but it can skim the floor eventually if that's your 90. Elbows tucked back in. Press out of the front heel. Take a moment to transfer the weight if it's all involved with the foot right now into the heel. Press out of the heel. Float back. Good. Readjust. That was one. We're going to move a little more uh, fluidly, but separate each movement. Step. Dip and press. Come back together. Weight in heel. Float back. Two. Here we go. Three. These can take a while to feel balanced, strong, and able to do one or many parts of it. Just keep working it safely and at your own pace. Find each position. Number three. Reaching forward. Dip the back knee. Press the ball up, bring it all together, pull the belly button in, press out the heel, flow back. Three, here we go. Four, looking breathy. Come back together, press back. That was more of a float, that felt good, I was in control. That's a great feeling. All right, here we go. Reaching forward, we're almost halfway there. Come together, press out the front heel. Good. Four or five more. Where is my counter? <laughs> All right, let's reach forward. This is the work in progress. That's what you're watching. We're figuring this out together. So that when I film it, and when we do it, we can really flow with it without as much cueing or explanation. And be safe, and keep the heart rate up, and keep the time down. <laughs> Three more. We're going to reach forward, elbows locked, dip the back, knee, press up. I find that some of this work with shoes on does feel a little easier when the ankle is a little more kind of set in the shoe and stabilized. It depends. But I like to strengthen all of my foot and ankles. So, again, barefoot or not, up to you. Reach forward, just be safe. Press, and don't be in a hurry. Speed doesn't really help you. You see, I see a lot of speed stuff in lifting and all, but control, breath, and work. It's gonna get you there. All right, reach forward, press, come together, and back. Last one, best one, reach. Dip and press. Belly button in. Come on back. Woo! That's good. All right. Guys, we're almost there. Do it again. Put my weight down. But you want to grab some water. So keep your water handy. Keep your towel handy. Whatever you need. With all my videos, I don't put music on them for many different reasons. But the main one is, is everybody has different music tastes. What motivates you while you're training or doing yoga may not motivate someone else. So use these videos with or without music in the background. I tend to uh, put some more on 
when I'm, even when I'm doing my own video or somebody else's, if they don't have it. So, that was my thinking behind that having to do, besides licensing and everything else. All right, here we go. I got our squats. Our right. elevator went down last time. It's going to come up this time. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Seriously, all I'm a little dyslexic, so right and left, up and down thing, and then mirroring can woo, make me a little crazy. But I'm working it out. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna go down to the bottom floor first. Remember the squat. Good form. Belly button is pulled in. We are not hinging forward. It's only an illusion that it makes it look deeper, but it's worse on your knees and your form. So I go for not as deep a squat first with good form. Always the safe way to go. And just better. Better for your body. So, again, we're using, we're weighting it, but we're not working the weight on the upper body. We're just using it for the lower body. So keep it nice and solid. Tuck the elbows in, shoulder blades back. Sit back. Pull the belly button. Go all the way down first to the bottom floor. We're at the basement. And then we're going to, see how my chest is still open and I'm not here? Keep that going. First floor. Second floor, all the way up. Let's go down again to the basement. Stop, 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 and up. We don't want to, we don't want to breeze through it. It's not one of those like at the what they call it, California stop and stop sign. You keep rolling. No, the work is in stopping. That's where the magic is. So don't don't move through it. All right, here we go. Three to the bottom floor. First floor, second floor, top floor. Here we go again. Number four, two, three, and up. Five, two, three, and up. Pull the belly button and keep breathing. Six, two, three. Press out of the heels. Press back in the heels. Sit back in the heels. Two, three. And I think this is eight. Eight, two, three, and up. Nine, go to ten. Two, three, and up. Last one, best one, all the way down. First floor, second floor. Woo, all the way up. Good work, you need to put that ball down now. All right, now we're gonna come down to that one knee. Right foot's gonna be in front. Again, make sure we're not out here. Knee is in line with hip, ankle is under knee. That's good alignment. I don't care if you, your back foot comes in or out a little bit, whatever makes you feel more stable. I like to keep my foot directly behind my knee and reach my toes towards the mat to stabilize. So now, if you haven't reversed your weights, go ahead and do it. I'm hinging forward. And since the tricep, everything's connected, was tweaking the shoulder a little bit, and this is the one that I was working with, I'm gonna try the tens on this side of the tricep and see how it does. And that's okay. It'll eventually even out and catch up. But do honor, sides are different. Even if they don't catch up right away, strengthen them independently so that you don't injure yourself if one side is weaker. And that's normal because we, one side, we, I'm left-handed, so that's where I tweaked it, on that side. So all that comes into play, all right? So pull the belly button in, long spine, we're taking the eye line a little bit forward so that we're not rounding at all. The heavier weight is in the side that the bicep curl. We're gonna isolate the bicep also by stabilizing it by putting the back of the arm just inside the knee. That'll keep the knee from rocking in and from all of this happening. All right, we don't want to swing the weight. Remember, we're using the positive phase, the lift, and the negative phase, the draw. So we're working with both. So we feel the weight on the lift, we work against the weight, we don't let it drop on that. That way we get nice work on both phases of the movement. Pull the belly button in. Tuck the elbow back. You can look back and see that it's tucked in, it's not out here, and that the, the shoulder and the elbow are in one long line, okay? And if that starts to drop, drop down the weight. 
Take a big inhale. On the exhale, we're going to extend and lift. Extend the back. Lift all the way to the shoulders, the front. Come back. Okay, this does feel heavy, but not as bad as the other side. So we'll keep going with it. A 10 pound. All right, here we go. Take an inhale. Exhale, work. Pull it back in. Exhale. I'm shaking on my tricep curl. My triceps have gotten weaker. And you know what? I knew that because I'm having a harder time doing my chaturanga push up without going to the knees. All right, so we'll drop in the middle of my set. No problem at all. Letting go of letting go. <laughs> it's a good thing. Let's keep going with this compound exercise. Tricep extension, bicep curl, pull that belly button, pull the shoulders back, take the eye line a little bit forward. Here we go, inhale, exhale, work. Smooth breath. Three more, I think. Make some noise. Ah, you make more, that's fine. Get the tear out. Ugh. Do what feels good to you. Make some noise, whatever it takes. Guess what? That is weights one on our yoga and strength training interval workout. There you go, thank you for watching, if you're watching and uh, working with me, working it out with me. I look forward to the rest of these segments so we can really do it well. And then when I tape the workout, we'll all be together in it, ready to go. Thanks so much. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead, it's free, and you'll be notified when new videos come out. Thanks.